along to episode 16 of the Youth Squad Legend series with Chesterfield. I'm your host, moderately infectious, probably COVID. Honestly, since 2020, Robert Avak has not looked at a bat the same way. <coughs> We love the inflammatory Robert Avert comments. Right then, so the menu has been spruced up. We've got a custom Chesterfield wallpaper. Spiffing work by Kiarika. Love to see it. Can't recommend it enough. It's quite remarkable how something so basic as a wallpaper can have such an effect. Three things are certain in life. Death, taxes, and negotiate with B. Walker. Some Donnie was telling me that he was a bit disappointed that Tom Haruyoka was removed from the scouting team. Yes, I understand that that wasn't the plan initially, but last episode scenario was quite funny. And Ioka will come back alongside our two new scouts. Let's hear today's scenario. Hello there, Porsche Katsy here. How are you doing? Finally, Rody Sepp and Ben Smacker have been hired as scouts. Danny Bins and Giacomo Cesarini have been given their marching orders. Okay, toodles. Yeah, buddy, big old. Rolly Sepp comes back for a third series. He's taken up the Danny Bins role. Ben Smacka replaces Giacomo Cesarini. And then next season, we'll see five-star, five-star Tom Harioka return, which completes our scouting lineup. Let's get into team management and start talking. Oh, mate, you want this talk. You want this conversation. We are going to attempt to get back to a two-striker formation. Someone also suggested Rocco out on the left hand side. Which made me wonder, what if the 4-2-4 with Jam and Smeaton as the central midfielders could work? Hold on, it's 4-2-4 alert. <laughs> I actually can't contain my excitement. Opponent analysis, we're at home against Southampton in the EFL Cup. Even the top teams are trying to resort to disgusting tactics, ticky tack of football. I don't think this lineup will really give us a hint on how effective a 4-2-4 could be for Chesterfield. But there's absolutely no way we're going to harm our stamina for the league games. Here's Chesterfield against Southampton. Yeah, I've decided to keep the scoreboard mod for now. If we have some issues with the colour that they use, then I could do a little bit of work post-production in Photoshop to make that look a little bit better for you guys. Whilst I'm playing, I know the score anyway. Yeah, Southampton messed up. Brilliant. Cheers, lads. I don't like the idea of just leaving Big Paul Onoachu unmarked. What an effort. Ross Stewart nods in second attempt. Sorry, Kin. Yes. Good touch. Can hit it from the edge of the box. And Lumley is called into action. Bancroft has left Stewart onside on Owachu Central. Ball roll got past Bancroft. Darassi gets a bit creative with the clearance. It's worked out. Jambe awaits the overlapping run. It's a little bit too late. I've given Sandri Roberto the wrong role here. He should be the advance forward. Solari should be the false nine. Please leave me alone, Paul Onowachu. I don't know what I've done wrong, lad. Knuckle ball! It promised so much and gave so little. I'd imagine that they're playing a really weak team here. Half time, we're losing by one goal to nil. Thaddeus Degazon is a baller. Just a shame that he plays in a position. Oh my god. Please leave me alone! Paul Onowachu is a menace to society. Walden simply can't contain it. Jesus, here he goes again. Please. Save me from this beast. You see, he's freaking me out, but it's actually Rod Stewart that's doing all the damage. As daft as it might sound, we might have been in this with Krasutsky and Kjartansson in tandem. It's not being compelling viewing by the Saints. They're just getting the job done. Please, just get the ball off him. Liverdini with a bit of distance on the clearance, but it's back to Southampton. Chuck Wemeka, he just walks through us. I'm running out of patience with Sandra. Roberto, he's like 70 overall and shouldn't be this crap. Oh no, not again. Sugawara, he just breezes past Rico Walden, who's never seen this amount of skill moves before. He thinks he's in a Joga Benito Nike advert, getting absolutely murked. Thaddeus Degas on to advance the ball, keeps the balance. Very industrious. And it's a lovely find to Sandri Roberto. Fake shot doesn't come off. He's certainly not Joga Benito standards. Liverdini to Degazon! Oh, 
smashes the post from a very, very long way out. It's a mini version of Enos Jam. Big, amazing Enos. Oh, into the box. Good work, Chief. Cross coming in. Dorassi was the target. Dorassi, of all people. Jambe into Bancroft with a very intricate pass. We're into stoppage time at the end of the game. There's not going to be a consolation goal here. I mean, it felt pretty impossible. A yo-yoing club from the Championship to the Premier League with a five-man defence and a holding midfielder. Yikes, that is a really tough night at the office. Mate, if Rico Walden gets hold of Will Smallbone, his bones will be even smaller. I'm just saying. Problem is he couldn't get hold of anything because he's a goalkeeper with like 37 pace. Actually, it's 41 pace, but you get the point. Welcome to Yuko Ike's Haiku Chronicles with your host, Yuko Ike. Robert Avak is still inflammatory in the Saudi Pro League. So this will be a very short-lived Christoph Krasutsky alone. I wasn't able to pull out of it, so Harrogate Town think they've got a striker, apart from the fact that they absolutely do not. I wonder how much his overall's gonna jump. Not at all, it stays at 53. Alright, this is the one to test the 4-2-4. I hope it works. Cambridge United 24th place. They're having a rough start to the season. I was gonna change up the player roles a little bit, but Krasutsky is happy to play false 9, so it'll be false 9 and target for forward Chesterfield against Cambridge. All right, guys, 14, 15 minutes into this game, I have to let you into a bit of a secret because it's quite evident in the gameplay. There was a mistake in between episodes and I accidentally updated this game to title update three. Most of the gameplay feels kind of the same. And because we talked about the sliders last episode, I didn't really want to bring it up today quite honestly. But oh my god, for some reason the AI now think it's FIFA Street. Ronaldo chops roulettes the absolute lot, so the skill move frequency drops all the way down to 60. Slow start to the game here, but in terms of the formation, I'm seeing promising signs. So maybe the 424 purists in the comments section will be able to rejoice. It is just a lot to ask of these central midfielders. I know that they're some of the best players that we've got. But just to spread balls like Enos Jam is doing to Ruwako. Hope you like the pun. That's going to be a common theme now to try and stretch this defense to breaking point. Soriman needed to control that better. That's the big con at the moment. I also don't like the fact that Ruwako's getting less and less involved. Head off! That's a good goal by Cambridge! Deadlock broken by Okadina. Even though we haven't seen much of the attack, there is one big positive that I can see. Krasutsky and Kjartansson do have somewhat of a connection. I think a hybrid formation between the 4-4-1-1 and the 4-2-4 will probably come up as the winner. Krasutsky! Needed to put more power behind the shot. It was easy for Chadwick in the end. Headed down to Enos. Enos jam, edge of the box. Uses Krasutsky. Just smashes it into a defender. The amazing Enos! On the half volley, always rising. What formation would give us two strikers, a central attacking midfielder who can drift wide, two central midfielders, but also be defensively secure enough for one of them central midfielders to maraud forward? It's a very, very complex system that's being built in our team. I think if we stay on the 4-2-4, then Enos Jam runs will become less and less because we don't want to get caught on the counter. And that's another really awful defensive display from Chesterfield on the set pieces. A lot of teething problems to sort out. Smeaton onto Enos Jam! Big bash dipping! Oh, I thought that was top corner. I do see the promise. I see enough to try and experiment further. But you see there, Enos Jam loses the ball and all of a sudden, we are exposed in defence. And getting pummeled by Cambridge. Let's get it right here. Cambridge have not been good in this game. We've just been very, very bad. So I don't think it's going to be 4-2-4 purists rejoice anytime soon as it becomes 4-0. We've been taught quite the tactical lesson. Four added minutes. One more chance to get a consolation goal. And for some reason, our target forward doesn't want to get into the box. 
Krasutsky at least has an effort and that's the end of the game. It's pretty rough viewing. It can't be like that going forward, but a more effective formation might come as a result of today. I think I might have cracked it. Four, three, one, two. But there's still like an effort to play wing play football. Central attacking midfielder goes to half winger. That will help Ruoko out and he usually drifts to the left, which means that the left central midfielder can be a box to box. Perfect for Enos Jam. That right there, folks, is probably the formation that we stick with. It's transfer deadline day. I could sign up another regen, but I'm quite happy to let this time run out. So that leaves us with a current budget of 6.5 million, which we can use on a previous scenario to improve some of the lower overall players. I was going to do that in this episode. Feeling quite rough. Sure, you can understand. I'll do it in my own time. So this is Barnsley in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy. Do we have a chance? chance of lifting this piece of silverware this season. I do fancy our chances. It's ticky tacky for the opposition. Might be a really poor decision, but Krasutsky, Kjartansson, Enos Jam, Smeaton, they're all playing today, which could make them unavailable for the next league match. Short-term pain for long-term gain. Every time they play it forward, we seem to be massively open. Oh no, that absolutely cannot go on or else we are sitting ducks. Four fullbacks need to be changed. Attacking wingback for Christy Mayer, there's no point. That left-hand side gets used up too much already. So Christy Mayer fullback, Durassi can change to just a wingback. So we're going from wing play to custom, fine. Come on lads, give us something to cheer today. Durassi's there to help out Rico Walden. There's better balance in the team. Corner kick, Chesterfield, this might be prime time to get us a goal. Enos Jam does not win it in the air. It's back to Christy Mayer, heads it down Krasutsky. Enos Jam turns and strikes towards goal. Disappointing. But look, there's numbers at the back so we can win the ball quickly. I think I see it play out a little bit better, but also with the usual 4-4-1-1 formation, we probably score a ton more goals, even though it's not as attacking. Just so desperate for a goal, Andrew Saruman false nine, Pensons replace Smeaton, Hem at the back alongside Bancroft, and Liverdini is gonna play the second half at left back. Now that right there could be a stroke of genius. The feisty Andrew Saruman feeding in Kjartansson. It might work. Enos Jam! Oh! Big Enos! Rely upon him to score the goal! Someone told me in the comment section how on earth do you strike these long shots? Well, what you do is you just check the vibe and if the vibe is right, you smash it like that. Oh, such a jammy Enos. Elaine, Chris Bancroft sensational today pal Hanford there to the rescue doesn't even go out for a corner kick why have Barnsley still got the ball oh it's blocked by Bancroft man of the match worthy performance Bancroft there with another touch Ruoko it's pinball in the box a very very stupid cut Anson goes in for a slide and gets the ball cleanly Bancroft with another jam, clean tackle into Enos Jam he's running out of energy he still is the thorn in the side big Enos Jam incredible but no finish at the end of it yes Kjart Sanson hold that ball up Ruoko was the option out wide. Jam, this is really nice play by Chesterfield. Has it started to click? That's a great ball over the top. I don't know whether to come or not with the goalkeeper. And our win is dashed in front of our faces. That is a wonderful ball over Sharing Pem. And a marvellous finish at the front post. It scrapes the inside of the post on its way to goal. All we need to do is defend the corner and Saruman does that. Oh, what are you doing? No! Degas on you f***ing idiot! Oh my God! Well, you just knew that was gonna happen. I'm trying to clear the ball. I should have cleared it with a circle button, but then again, he probably puts a standing tackle in there. Barnsley are one kick away from winning this football match. Come on, Alfie Hanford! Sent the wrong way. That is shambolic. Final whistle goes. Big cheers from the home fans. A stunning turnaround 
at the end of the game there for Barnsley. But at least we've seen a goal this episode. That will be the end of this quite short episode. I'm sorry for that, but you might be able to hear it in the voice. I am on the ropes a little bit. This has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode. If you've enjoyed it, then please give the video a like. If you're not subscribed around here yet, then press the red box down below and hit the bell icon for mobile notifications. A big thanks to everybody on the right hand side supporting me financially on Patreon. You can too with the link down in the description box below. I do feel like there's a way that we can string all the positives that we see coming from the Chesterfield players together in one fluid formation. We've always got the 4-4-1-1 as a backup, but that will mean eventually having to choose between Kjartansson and Krasutsky. And unless Krasutsky is like a world beater, he's got very little chance. Anyway, that's for a long time in the future. You take care. See you next episode. Bye-bye.